It is the Raya podcast in which Nikki and I discuss items of deep concern <laughs> to all of us. Not just us, Nikki and I, but to all of us. To all, all our concerned and punished. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think punished. I think uh, I think hashtag blessed. Well, let's see what we got then. Uh, today in the podcast, uh, we talk about medieval times. We do. Probably, probably the most important thing. And probably... Uh, one of the few outlets discussing the current state of medieval times. Yeah, just seeing like what's available for you for celebrations and for parties and for uh, your vacations. Yes, uh, we get some pens in the mail. Talk about Flash Gordon, which I'll have you know has been delivered to my house. <laughs> oh, it came already? Yep. Really? Well, yep. it did come early then. Yep. You didn't even think you were going to get it today. I got an email telling me at first that I wouldn't have it till Thursday. Yeah. Then I got one saying it was coming tomorrow, and then I found out it was delivered at 8 a.m. Uh-oh. Well, we got to finish. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, we talk about Nike's new slippers, uh, COVID symptoms, and the order they appear in, uh, COVID-19 and the pepperoni shortage. Microsoft Flight Simulator. Mm -hmm. So that should keep you guys busy for a while. Hopefully you enjoy the podcast. Say hello. If you ever find something you want us to cover, like a story or an article, feel free to text it to us at 877-2-RADIO-U. Uh, just put it's for the riot and then your name, and we'll see you when we're in the studio next time. All right. See you guys Have soon. Have a great day. Bye. They even make morning people want to reach for the snooze button. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. <laughs> You know, it's one of those mornings when you wake up asking yourself, how did I get subscribed to the Jimmy Kimmel live newsletter? <laughs> what, what, what made that happen? It's like, how, <laughs> like what, where, what did I forget to go down and look at or uncheck or unclick? Like, where well, did it's that either happen? <laughs> An industry thing that got you signed up for it. Possibly. Um, I feel like maybe a YouTube thing. Who knows? Uh, maybe. It just feels like because you had we had YouTube TV for a while. Maybe that was it. Maybe something. Maybe you're, you have Philo, right? Maybe someone's selling you out somewhere. That That's entirely possible. Uh, but I, I just unsubscribed. But as I told Nikki... Was it here? I can't remember. Life is blurring. But you unsubscribe from something, and they're like, oh, you've unsubscribed from our monthly Jimmy Kimmel Live newsletter. You're still subscribed to the daily, the weekly, mm -hmm. the semi-quarterly, and also the Jimmy Kimmel Not Live weekly newsletter. <laughs> you miss the rest of them. And it's like, what? Can I unsubscribe from all? Well... Well, Let's not be hasty. You should be so spiteful that you're looking for, remember when you can click like off all the ones and yeah. then it goes, why, why have you chosen to go or something? And then you just say, I never signed up for this because <laughs> that gives them usually problems with their uh, email marketing. Whenever they give me that option, yeah. I always take it you because you didn't sign up. I have with rare exception. I never sign up for something. Now, then they'll say like, well, you know, there was a, at the very bottom left-hand corner, you could have unclicked this box. <laughs> you missed it. That's your fault. Like, <laughs> do you know why you hid that checkbox? Because you knew nobody in their right man, mind is signing up for it. Well, at least you're out now. So that's I'm good. Out. I'm out, Nikki. <laughs> I'm out. So whew, I'll tell you, what a relief. This early in the day, and I've already made a major change in my life. You've accomplished so much. Now, you didn't put yourself there in the first place. Something else did, but you got out. You know, Nikki, that just goes to show you that I'm the kind of person that maybe I don't start problems, but I definitely finish them. Yeah, but you need to watch because by clicking into it, now you've signed up and you didn't realize for a for whole host else. of other yeah. things. Like, oh, did you follow the unsubscribe link? That's <laughs> that's the unsubscribe from Jimmy Kimmel but live weekly update. Updates, but that's also the subscribe to all things ABC. So you've you've done more damage, I guess, than good. It's wonderful. <laughs> the worst of the worst. Are you ready? The riot podcast. Radio U. Radio U. Radio U. Radio U. Radio U. Oh my gosh! We want to say a huge hey to Jason. Jason mailed us something that is downright. Spectacular. They are perfect. Um, so, uh, you know what? I'll read you the... Well, let's tell them what we got. First off, we got pens. Yeah, not like, P-E-N-S, but P-I-N-S. Yes. Uh, and, Nikki, you got a bear. It's beautiful. It's really pretty. And he said he saw it on Amazon and thought of me, so he sent that. And I got a narwhal pen that says, <laughs> bye, buddy. Yours is wonderful. It's so perfect for you. 
like, I perfect. I love it so uh, much. So they're so nice. I'm going to put it on her bag. Yeah. Do you think, like, this? I could just put this on my backpack. It's not going to fall off, right? No, you just, uh, you just know, use, use that. Or there's, I think mine has, like, a rubber backing one, too. So I think you could get it on there. I always feel like the rubber backing ones are the ones that are really falling off. Wow. Well, Don't you think? It depends on the fabric because it'll just that'll fall off, yeah, into the bag, and then your bat, your pin part will be gone. So here's the thing: whatever just, works. Here's where I'm at. Like, I value this buy buddy pin so much <laughs> that I want to make it? sure that I, I I doesn't go away. I don't know. You'll have to try it out on the bag and see. All right. Um, so here's our letter from Jason. He says, "Greeting from America's drain, aka Florida." Nice. First off, yeah, he's from there. He he knows where he is. Uh, I grew up in Westerville, uh, though, and have been listening for a very long time. I was on Amazon the other day, saw the bear, thought it was something Nikki would like. And you kept, are right. <laughs> kept looking at the other suggested items when I saw the buddy one. I instantly heard the sound of you guys saying it, so I had to get them. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, funny thing is, I had to wait for the buddy pen to be shipped from Columbus to Daytona. I shipped it back to you. Love you guys. Enjoy the pens. Hope the cupcakes, which he says he sent us cupcakes. I think they're coming. They're not here yet. I think they come Wednesday, so maybe tomorrow. Today um, or tomorrow, we'll see. Jason. So, Jason, thank, thank you, you Jason. very much. Jason, you're so sweet. I'm totally putting this pin on my bag, and I'm excited. About it. <laughs> it's so great. And we haven't even seen the cupcakes yet, but we're so excited for those. Well, I mean... <laughs> You talk to me about cupcakes. I'm excited. We had some lovely uh, listeners from Radio U Dayton bring us donuts on Friday. Yes. And now cupcakes this week. It's just wonderful. It's a, what a time it's to a, be alive. It's a tough time, right? What a time to be alive. <laughs> you guys are very nice to always think of us when you come across something that looks like something we would enjoy. One day, a heroic time traveler will go back in time to make sure none of this ever happens. Until then. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. So they did it. They postponed the election. But not here. But not here. Yeah. That uh it's I it is kind of crazy though to see they have postponed the election in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. So they have a new outbreak there, which I I'll just say, Nikki and I have been saying off air. New Zealand shouldn't have said anything. They crossed the 100-day mark without any new COVID cases, and, and it became big news over that weekend, and they never should have brought it out loud. They never should have said anything. Because it turned into this whole thing like, why can't we all be more like New Zealand? They're the best. We're the worst. But they, they do everything right. We do nothing right. I mean, it's a very small island, small population, but they had managed to control it. The problem is a couple of days later, they had like a four people outbreak in Auckland and now they have almost 50 people. So they have gone back to having a problem. Again, some people say like only 50, but compared to population for right. them that is a concern there are only 150 people that live there well and also there's more than that but also uh things are still locked down from tourism i believe so the concern is how is this getting in yeah so if the if nobody has it and nobody's allowed on the island and then suddenly people have it what happened? Now, I don't know if you can still fly out and in if you are a resident in New Zealand. Like, I'm just not sure about some of their rules, but they did lock them back down, especially in Auckland. And then that led to the postponement of their election. They are postponing the election by one month. Mm-hmm. And so basically everything forward but a month. And it seemed like they had to get her agreement and then the opponent and they both agreed to it, and they were fine with it. Well, you don't want to be the one that doesn't. I know, right? In New Zealand. Here in the United States, here. I don't even want to talk about it. Like, just, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, but, yeah, like, in that particular case, yeah, I can see that. You don't want to be the one that's like, no, 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 let's do it now. And then it would be like, obviously, we should give the baby to the one that doesn't want to cut it in half. So, that, that wouldn't be good for you. I, I totally get that. So that's what's been going on there. Yeah. So they have postponed. You thought they were bad live? Well, just wait until you hear this. The Worst of the Riot Podcast with Obadiah and Nikki. I mean, it's kind of a bummer because it's not out for delivery, but I did see that uh, it shipped yesterday. Last night, late last night. What shipped? Should be uh, delivered, according to this, 
tomorrow night by 9 p.m. Uh, that would be my copy of the 4K restoration of Flash Gordon. Aww. Ah! Yay, I'm so glad that's coming in so fast. I'm wow. so pumped. <laughs> what quick about delivery. Watching it. I can't wait. So does this mean it. if it comes in by like nine o'clock tomorrow night, are you gonna watch it that night? Are you gonna wait till the weekend or wait till Thursday or what? I don't know. I part of me is like, yeah, I'll wait till the weekend. Part of me is like, as soon as it gets there, I'm ripping it open <laughs> and running downstairs and watching it. If not, if you got everything else done and got like uh, an what early start there? on Friday, what else even matters? Well, that's what up else? for interpretation. <laughs> what What is there in the world that we need? I, I don't know if the rest of us would say that, but maybe if you got everything else done so that on Friday you can have an early start to it and just enjoy it from the weekend. I can't. Wait to watch. <laughs> Can't wait till then. It is. I I need us all to be clear on this. I, everybody listening, are we clear? It is not a good movie. We so just, is it a movie or a TV show? Oh, it's a movie. It's a movie. Wasn't there a TV show or maybe I was, was like wrong? A cartoon, I think. Cartoon. Probably. Everything has a cartoon, right? We could be like. Uh, was he a fast person? <laughs> no, no, no. Not the, that the Flash. Flash? So what? That's the Flash. Okay, Flash Gordon was a serialized comic in newspapers in the 30s. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's where it started. Then they started doing serial, uh, serialized uh, like little movies that would run in movie theaters. I don't know how those worked. Like I don't know if they were like 20 minutes or 50, whatever. There were things like that. So you would go every week and see the new installment of Flash Gordon, uh, and that was the thing. And when I was a kid, I read... And I've read all kinds of like old weird stuff, but like I found this collection of those Flash Gordon comics from the 30s newspapers in a big hardback at the library and read them all and loved them. Like I thought it was great. And so then I saw this movie that is uh, it's from 1980. It is a bad movie. It's not good. Not bad in an ironic way or a now it's so cool way. It's still but bad. That's what's so great about it's it. It's been restored. It is unabashedly <laughs> bad. And it I had the person I was watching with it goes, I think this is really a play. Like they filmed a play. Oh, because it just seems like poor production. It just, it just looks like they're on a stage somewhere. Well, no wonder you're rushing to watch oh, this. I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. So it arrives tomorrow. So if you guys need me tomorrow night, no. He's busy. I'm going to be busy. going to be tired coming in on Thursday. And, Staying up late, partying and hard. Today I'm going to be reading all the reviews. So just... <laughs> Bear with them. Next 48 hours, I'm pretty much booked up. That's all I can say. Well, I hope the delivery comes fast and early. Me too. What if it came today? What if? It's not. Wow. It it should. Today's, if I had just, instead of ordering it, if I had like gone to a Best Buy or something, I could have picked it up today. You're fine though. I mean, you got other stuff to do. But you have to ask yourself, would they even have it? Would they bother stocking this? At the store. <laughs> Maybe they would have just given it to you for free, though. Like, hey, no one else is interested no in this. No one's buying this thing. So we'll give it to you. How to survive the riot. Do the complete opposite of everything they say. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. All right, show of hands. How many of you guys really love Pizza Hut? I I haven't had it in years, but I do. <laughs> I don't know why. That's not loving it. <laughs> I know. Like, not I, having it in years. In years and there's one... <laughs> Right down the street from your house? I know, and, and we're talking years and years and years. No, it hasn't been that it long. It has been a it long hasn't. time. It hasn't. It's okay. If you want to say a year, I'll buy that. But I can all but guarantee you that sometime over the course of the last year, no, it's been a long we have time. been to that stupid buffet. No, we haven't. Maybe it's because I remember I had it more when I was a vegan because you could order through the app and have no cheese on it, and there'd be, like, no judgment because no one would know. Okay, sure. And then you just would pick it up, and it'd be fine. You had a little drive through and you went and go, you know, got your pizza. Mm-hmm. But? But it's been a long time, but I always enjoyed it. <laughs> I feel like it hasn't been that long. But then again, sometimes negative memories really stick out, <laughs> and so I'm just extra remembering the Pizza Hut buffet. They were saying that Pizza Hut actually um, bounced back and had a really good, I think it was looking back to May, because of the quarantine, people were ordering pizza again. Right. But they're not coming inside to eat it. That's the problem that Pizza Hut is happening. Their business is actually doing really well, except... 
For the dine-in stuff. For the dine-in stuff. Which and was so closed for most of that. One of their, uh, you know, Pizza Hut's a franchise, and one of the largest franchise holders, NPC International, has said that they're going to be closing 300 locations. And that's basically because they're dine-in locations, mm-hmm. and nobody comes in to eat pizza anymore. So think about this again. We talked a few weeks ago how this will be the trend for all the restaurants that we go to. Uh, Chipotle is moving to their drive through stuff. Starbucks is closing a bunch of locations, but it's the ones that can't. That don't have drive throughs That cannot get a drive through experience added to it. Um, Duncan is closing some, but also, again, drive through uh, A bunch of places are really making it about the drive through experience for you, and there won't be any dine-in anymore. Yeah, so... Nikki, if I made Pizza Hut more accessible, are you? Yeah, we would never go in unless someone randomly picked when we used to have staff lunches. Because, I mean, you can't. It's harder to do that now. You're not allowed to eat lunch anymore at Radio U. Well, you you can. It's just you can't really go in a big group unless you're eating outside. Um, And we had a buffet at one near us. And so we'd go every so often. But Mm -hmm. that'd be about it. Things have changed. Yeah. They just want you to go through the drive through line. Shut it down. <laughs> so no more inside. So what do you? Th- what about tonight? You think it's a Pizza Hut night? Maybe. You're going to call Eric and say, hey, Eric, let's get I found this Detroit-style pizza at Costco, and you get two of them for What's like a- $9, like Jets. That's what that's called. Okay. All right. It's $9 for two of them, and it's and amazing. Are they frozen? Yeah, it's great. And they fr- they bake up? Oh, they're so crispy. And really? it's like better than Jets, and Jets is so expensive, and these are just $9. I love Jets pizza, but I do feel like when I go there that I'm like treating myself <laughs> because it's so expensive. It's the expensive pizza, but yeah, I've been I've been fine with that. Okay. So Domino's, along the same line, said that they're going to hire more than 20,000 people because they have such a surge in orders uh, for pizza delivery as well. Mm. Well, I guess we're eating pizza. <laughs> so Domino said that, but they have more smaller carryout focus stores. They don't have like dine in ones. Yeah. I mean, the. I. I don't do think they, they have, even have that. I don't. Yeah, I don't think they do. Like I, I mean, I think I've been in one where they had chairs, but you were just there to wait to wait to pick it up. Yeah. So some of the other uh, restaurants look in this article. Um, they talked about ones that might not make it through the COVID stuff with having to close down for so long. Dave and Buster's has a pretty good chance of filing for bankruptcy. Uh, the owners of Outback Steakhouse said that that's a pretty good probability. And Denny's and Cheesecake Factory are other names of places that were really hit hard and don't have necessarily the same outlook of recovery. We should go to Denny's. Denny's? We also haven't been there in a while. A long time. <laughs> I think like the last time they had the Hobbit menu. It was bad enough the first time around, but now it's worse. Don't believe us? Just keep listening. You'll find out soon enough. This is the Worst of the Riot Podcast. So as I mentioned, and I'm sure you're all very concerned, my birthday is next month. And how do I celebrate my birthday in the middle of this COVID crisis? What do you think we should go? I don't want a drive-by honk fest. You want something else, something special, but we have to figure out what we can do. I need something more elaborate and more expensive, which is why. Special and safe. Okay. All right. Elaborate expensive, (laughs) special, safe. Okay, those are all the things we need to check off. Okay. Uh, Nikki, I am happy to let you know that they have just reopened five different medieval times castles. (laughs) I was there when I was a kid. I've totally gone to medieval times. I've never done it. You never? It would be perfect for us. (laughs) Oh, it is something. Even even younger Nikki recognized it was something. Well, it's something. (laughs) You would go in, if you've never been into a medieval times, it's normally at like a Myrtle Beach or a Orlando where it's a... Those are two of the locations that are now open. Oh, are they? It's like in those Dallas, Texas, (laughs) Atlanta, Georgia, Scottsdale, Arizona. Yep. So I've been to the one. I think I went to the Myrtle Beach one and the Orlando one. But you go in, you get um, food that you can't eat with silverware. So when you were a kid, that was big stuff. tear into it. And then you have knights that fight for that joust and all that stuff. And then you would see if your section's knight would win. So you cheer for your knight. Yeah, that was was about it. Mm -hmm. So there are five locations open now. And I think it's time for us to, I think that's it. Now, none near us. So I think we'd have to to travel. 
you know what, Nikki? Let's be clear about a couple things. First off, they're all in our hemisphere. <laughs> Okay, and they're all on our continent. True. And they're all in our country. So when you say they're not near. We could drive. And, you know, like they are-ish. It's just that your scale is too small. And what about if for your birthday we actually go to a buffet? I was thinking we should go to like Golden Corral. We should. Because it's all weird now with the stuff, but you could still go. find out what it's like. You could still totally go. Yeah, or we could go to Texas State Brazil. We could do that. It's a uh, wait a minute. No one take that back. No one say we can go there. They have a lunchtime, but it's still super expensive. Yeah. Okay. And then you know what happens once I pick that for my birthday lunch, uh, everybody. everybody starts picking it for theirs. And... No, you'd have to pay that one back. <laughs> <laughs> you get a free birthday lunch here at Radio U when it's your birthday, mm-hmm. but no one's gone that big before ever. That's a very expensive place. It's time. It might be cheaper for us to travel to Orlando and or to Pearl do medieval Beach times. Still too medieval times than it would be to eat there for all of us. She's not lying. Mm. She's not, okay. Oh, that's not a bad idea though. You know what? We'll go. <gasps> I've got it. Okay. Oh, I've got it. This is perfect. <laughs> this is it. Okay. We can't go to medieval times. Uh-huh. But but we go to Golden Corral. But we all go dressed up like we're going to medieval times. So like knights and ladies and whatever. Isn't that too much work? Squires. It's too much effort. Uh, yeah. I don't think they'd want you to go in. They just want it low key. Just leave leave everybody alone. How Nikki, yeah, go and crowd. We go in like that. They wouldn't even notice. Actually, they'd say, why are you dressed so fancy? Things are never as bad as they seem, except when it comes to the riot. The riot. Then they're worse. They're always worse. It's the riot on Radio U. So, Nikki, when you get placed under guard by the Secret Service, mm-hmm. the United States of America, uh, you get to choose a code name. Mm-hmm. And that includes if you're running for office. So, for example, actually, in the case of Joe Biden, he may still be under Secret Service protection as from his, his time president. as vice president. Because in a lot of ways, once you become... Uh, by like a political figure. Can I talk? <laughs> so, really? so what you're, you're looking for? If you're at a certain level of elected office, they will protect you for the rest of your life. And it might not be the same to the same degree as, right. as the person gets older or past the years of office, but they're always around. Right. And so in this case, Kamala Harris running for vice president, she is now under the protection of the Secret Service. She got to choose for herself and everyone does their code name. So you're not assigned it. You just get to pick what you want. Right. So she picked Pioneer. Mm. That's her code name. But it got me thinking, if you were to be protected by the Secret Service, <laughs> what would you sure. want your code name oh, to be? Oh, that's a good question. Right? That's a real, that's, you could go a lot of ways with that. I know. What would you, like, well, what do you think you would pick? I don't know. I can't just, I need to think about that for a little bit. My, it, the first thing that came to my mouth, mind, like the first thing was loud mouth. For you? Yep. Oh, you, you're supposed to I think pick one word. That is. Loud mouth just loud together. Mouth. Yeah. <laughs> just all at one. All right. And you can just see, see the guys like leaning into their, uh, like their mics that they have in their hands, like loud mouth is moving. <laughs> So Tom said doofus. Tom, is that you or is that? Oh, that's his code name. That's his code name. Okay, that's your code name. I like that one. That could work. Why does it have to be a negative code name, though? Can we come up with something nice like sparkle or something? Well, that could be yours. I could totally want that. Sparkle is moving. Yeah. I love the idea of mine being loud mouth. Like, that's just. Because everybody would think at first that the Secret Service were being mean to you and you're like, they don't realize you picked it. No, no, no. I picked that. Loud mouth. It's good. So let's see. Uh, no, that's not what. <laughs> what about? So, do you really think you go with Sparkle? No, I wouldn't. What would you pick? Um, Cupcake. No, I don't want anything. Horsey. Well, what's that one? Well, just unicorn. No. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want something that Mama I bear. would that I would have Mama picked. Bear, Mama Bear's moving. That could be good. I like that. I don't want something. I don't want that something also, I would have picked when I was a kid, like that, Sparkle. <laughs> that also would be a great CB handle for you, Nikki. A uh, Mama Bear moving through. 
I got Smokey on my tail. I've been called Honey Bear, so maybe that. <laughs> honey Bear could be it. Actually, let's be honest. It would be Bunny. Bunny, yes. Uh, Val said the bear uh, sounds, let's see. Oh, I could be Panda. So saying Panda's the bear. Panda's good. That could work out. That's a good idea. All right. I like the eye of that. Uh, Nikki should be what? I don't know. I don't want to say it out loud because I'm concerned. I don't know Sorry, that, Luke. But what, I don't know what that word. You might have typed it wrong. Pup tart. <laughs> so I think everybody. Nikki should be pup tart. Everybody I like realizes mine should be animal, probably related. Yeah. Ooh, what if instead of loud mouth, mine was mouthy? Mouthy. See moving. that I think works better. That's I like, shorter. I like that one. Because in like a case of emergency, mouth, they need to just get it out there. Nikki's code name is Stop It Bear. <laughs> Bear. 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 Stop, Stop it. it. <laughs> I like Pop Tart for you, even mm. though I know you wouldn't go with it. No, I don't think so. So then, Nikki, you. I are... don't need to pick right now. We can. I can still just think about it. You got to think about it. Yeah, I don't want to pick my code name. I'm not being actually watched yet, or well, okay, protected. I actually, I'll have to say my thought was. Kamala Harris, and I mean, they all, you know, their names are out there, what their code names are. What's the point in having a code name if you tell everybody what your code name is? People have told their code names before. I, no, no, no. It's not her. They all do. Yeah. But that's my thought is like, what do you need a code name for if I, everybody knows who it is? I don't think it's the same code name like you're staying in a hotel under a different name, like for secure. I don't think it's along those lines. Always a Disney princess. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. Using advanced technology, we've digitized and transcoded Obadiah and Nikki into a purely digital format. This is the Worst of the Riot podcast. Have you seen the new Nike shoe that is coming out at the end of the month? <laughs> it, what do they call it? What's the term for They're it? They're calling it the offline. It's the offline. It's basically just a, a slipper. Like, it's a slide-on shoe, but they're really trying to make it next level, uh, but it is just a cushiony slipper. So here's the idea. It's called the Nike Offline. It's supposed to be out August 28th. And what is it? It's an anti-sneaker. That's right. <laughs> so they say instead of their just do it catchphrase, they urge people to just do nothing. They said the shoes were inspired by the mental health benefit of taking time to unplug and disconnect. So while you're at home more often than we used to be, these are the shoes you'd wear inside your house. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, something so you can just, you know, just chill. <laughs> and you have to have this shoe for that. It's a mule. Just take it easy. It's got massaging soles that provide relaxing experience for you that's wearing it. Wait, pause. What? Um, you said it's a mule. As if I know what that is. That's the 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 term for the slide on for the for shoe. That kind of shoe. Yeah, for okay. that shoe, it's called a All mule. Right. Uh, one features special nubs that massage the feet, while the other is meant to ensure comfort for prolonged wear. They do look. I mean, they look like sweatpants for your feet, but they look <laughs> very comfortable. They do. A lot of people trending with it said that it looks like very grandparenty, but everybody was okay with it because they're supposed to be very comfortable. Well, you so know, they're going to be released on the 28th. If Nike makes it, then suddenly being a grandparent's an amazing thing. I guess it's fine. I they guess. don't have a price yet, I don't think. Uh, would you wear them? Uh, inside? Uh, Slippers are supposed like, to be. Like to I hate shoes. shoes. I hate shoes. I only wear these slides or flip flops. I hate shoes. Uh, but inside, I think these are going to be priced outside of the normal slippers that we get. Oh come on! I, if I had no to way. guess, these probably are a little bit more money ah. than the twenty or thirty dollars slippers one gets at Amazon. You know what, Nikki? With all this negativity, I'll tell you who needs to unplug. <laughs> Is it me? It's you. <laughs> Uh, you know, I wasn't. I'm not wearing the right shoes inside my house. Apparently, well, they have not listed the price for these shoes yet, so we we don't know what you're in for. So here. it's centered about. It's supposed to be out cushiony comfort, not performance, and not style. Mm. So everybody that Nike says they want you to enjoy your downtime, rest, relax, both physically and mentally, and this is the shoe they want you to be wearing. That's the hard part. Is Nike? I don't need shoes to do that. In fact, I think the shoes would make me feel more like I, I wasn't able to relax. Shoes for running? Yes. Shoes for going outside? Yes. Shoes for inside? No. <laughs> These are just slippers, but they're supposed to be so comfortable that they help you relax. You know, you don't want to take them off. Yeah. 
So, and then uh, you know what happens. The what? more comfortable your shoe, your inside shoe is, the one time you take them outside. And then suddenly you're just wearing them outside never, too. Yep. Come on. <laughs> like, I just wear this anywhere. You're listening to a morning show hosted by two people who absolutely despise getting up in the morning. Will you give me a break one time? The Riot Radio U. Of course, it is hard to know where all of this is going to go. And by all of this, I mean COVID-19 and returns to school. Uh, But in one particular case, uh, it has resulted in shutting everything down. University of North Carolina, a week ago, everybody moved in, Mm -hmm. started up classes. Boom. Yesterday, they were like, nope. We're done. They no decided more. in uh, in classroom stuff can no longer be done. Yep. So uh, UNC has thirty thousand students. Uh, UNC Chapel Hill. It's one of the largest universities in the country that has decided to hold in person classes for the fall. Mm-hmm. So they were, you know, different people making different choices, whatever. But they're a big one, and they're like, yeah, come on back. And then they were like. Ah! No, go away. <laughs> Even though I think I think from reading it, they're still allowed to stay there or something, but they're just not having in-person classrooms. Like I didn't feel like it was where last spring when everybody had to leave campus like right away. Right. I didn't get that from it, but I'm not sure. I think they're just trying to work through it. Uh, so it says that they are moving all of their uh, by Wednesday, so by tomorrow, they'll all be at remote learning. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, uh, let's see, dun, 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 dun. I don't know if they've, I don't think they've asked everybody to leave. No, I, I, I don't think, think they're doing that. I think you're right. I, I believe it's just that you would have class, but from your dorm room. Oh, That might be Ugh. better to at least still feel like you're having the college experience. But I couldn't guarantee and tell you that. It are the problems of getting COVID coming from just going to your class or is it from the other college experiences that you have that that's where you're getting it? That's actually what I was going to say, because if you if you tell me like, oh, you've got to stay in your dorm all day, all that does is make me 10 times more likely to go out. At night. Sure. And that's going to be the place that I would imagine the real problem is. Now, to give you an idea, uh, last Sunday, so that would have been, I don't have the date, but like around the 10th or 9th or something, uh, the positivity rate among COVID testing was Mm 2.8%. That jumped to 13.6%. And 135 students tested positive over the course of the week. And again, you can argue about, well, who cares? That's not that many. I, I don't know, whatever. They just but don't I know wanna, this. Until they, they figure it out, they don't want to have any more chances. They don't want it to continue to spread. And so they have gone from in person to online. No classes today. They say classes will start up with remote learning tomorrow morning, and the semester will continue. If you're looking for all the funny moments you missed during the riot, we apologize. You won't find them here. There there weren't any. This is the worst of the riot podcast. While we're talking about COVID-19, and we never do. <laughs> Food, video games, COVID-19. It's well, the new it's riot. it's a cycle of what everybody's wanting to hear. So I do have here a study that was published in Frontiers in Public Health. Uh, and... You know, one of the issues with COVID-19 is that its symptoms are like a million other things. You could have a sinus infection. It'll look like Mm COVID-19, at least the symptoms. You know, you could have the flu. It looks like that. You could have strep throat. I mean, there are all these things where it's like, look, you could have a ton of things. I guess in reality, when humans get sick, we only have a few things that we do. Symptom-wise, you're right. There's only so much. And so they say in this uh, study that was published in Frontiers in Public Health, this was a study done by USC, they say that one of the things that sets COVID-19 apart is not the symptoms themselves, but the order in which they occur. Oh, that's interesting. So how you get the symptoms, like in, in what order? Yes. What do they say is the order? They say the order goes like this. First, a fever. Uh-huh. Then a cough. Followed by muscle pain. That's that's the order. It says that's the order. Now that still sounds a lot like 
some other things. But the when does order, the taste thing come in? I uh, think that seems to be what most people that that I've seen get it mention it. Well, uh, do they not put it I'll in tell the you order? What, I have I have three more items on the list. Nikki, mm-hmm. you ready? So we go from fever to cough to muscle pain to nausea, then to vomiting or diarrhea. Oh, stop! Stop! You asked. Shh, I didn't ask for that. You did, kind of. <laughs> So it doesn't say. Doesn't say the taste thing. About the taste thing, yeah. The only thing, okay, the thing that sucks about that, though, like if you have allergies and sinus stuff, it's, the other day I sat down, I honestly sat down to eat something, could barely taste it. It was just like, man, I don't taste anything at all. And I'm like, I got the COVID. But it's not. It's, but it's not. It's a symptom of the other things we have normally every year. Right. So by the next day, I was like, no, I kind of taste this. And so I was just right back to normal. But I definitely had that experience mm-hmm. of, I can't taste this. You panicked for a moment. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, no, I. Then you're also looking at your food and you're like, it has no taste. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bland food. I'm eating this rice cake. I can't <laughs> I taste, can't taste it. anything. No, it's okay. It doesn't have a taste. Oh, it's fine. All right. It's supposed to be that way. <laughs> no, it's tough, but I guess that is important if you feel like you have any of the symptoms. Notice then the uh, the order in which you get them. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's the order one more time. Uh, number one, fever. fever. Two, cough. Three, muscle pain. I'll leave the rest to your imagination. Just to spare Nick. I gave during the last fundraiser, and all I got was this crappy morning show. This is The Riot. Unlistener supported. Radio U. Well, well. What do we have here? Nikki, supposedly, Mm -hmm. the price of the Xbox Series X has leaked. Oh. It goes like this. Alana Pierce, she is a well-known streamer. She claims to have seen an ad from a company called, uh, I lost it. It's some retailer that I'd never heard of, but whatever. Um, and she says that it was five ninety nine. Oh, and the ad? So $600 for the Xbox Series X is what she's saying. Now, let's gather together here a little closer. Okay. Um, is the $600 like that's the only one or is that the more expensive one? Well, the, there's a, seems a lot. there's a rampant theory mm-hmm. that there is going to be a less expensive Xbox that may or may not come out this year. Sure. That will be, you know, less expensive. Yeah. I, I don't know what that means. But. The pain with that one, though, is you know that'll be like $500. It'll only take like 100 off. Yeah, probably. Mm. Uh, may, maybe not, though. Maybe it'll be like 400 Maybe. And in the middle of this, still no room. I think the PlayStation 5 is going to be $500. I think it'll be $499. And it's important that you put the four first because they don't want you to say 500. They want you to say 499. Right. I think that's what it's going to cost. That has been what I have been anticipating the entire time. So but, much money. So much money. Well, in the middle of all of this, like last uh, consoles, like the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, the Xbox One launched for 500 and they forced you to get a Kinect. Uh, so they eventually came out with a $400 model without the Kinect. Mm-hmm. Uh, the PlayStation 4 launched for $400. One of the things that's different in the middle of all of this is that when they launched those two consoles, they were not exactly cutting edge. They actually were... Uh, they didn't have anything a, new in it. They didn't. In a yeah. lot of ways, they were almost behind uh, when those consoles launched. These consoles, they've put a lot of money and research into kind of being a little more cutting edge this time around. Some of the stuff that they have in them is is pretty spectacular, and that stuff costs money. That's important, though, for a certain side of the gaming world. Yeah. But I think they want to get everybody buying these, so everybody buying them might not be someone who cares about the fact that it makes it $600. They just right. would have rather have had a cheaper box. I, I'm interested still in the PlayStation 5. I'm, I don't see me getting an Xbox One or Xbox Series X, but, you know, Nikki, console generations last a long time. We'll see what happens. Never say never, right? You never say never. So the leak was possibly the new upcoming Xbox would be $600. This is the Worst of the Riot podcast. So Nikki and I are pondering our ability to, uh, 
well, we want to grow our online brand. Yeah, what do you do? What do we do? And so that's uh, what Donna was thinking to herself. She was out with some friends on a boat near the Statue of Liberty. She's got about 8,000 followers on TikTok. She wants to grow her brand. So you know what she did, Nikki? What'd she do? She went for a swim in the Hudson River. Oh, is she the one who jumped off in front of the Statue of Liberty? I saw it on the uh, the For You page. Mm-hmm. That was her? That was her, Nikki. At first when I saw it, I was like, oh, what's the big deal? Then you realize, like, you don't you don't go in that water. That is known as some of the, f- the filthiest? filthiest water ever. When she jumps in and the water kind of parts and moves over, you just see just this dirtiness in that water. You're like, what is all that? It's not blue. Uh, well, it's not I mean, clean. Like, it has like a color. Did she get a lot of followers for it? Well, she got a, just a ton of views mm-hmm. for that particular item. Though, is some, I can tell you like views don't always equate to followers. Correct. You know, everybody might take a look at it and be like, well, that's great and all, but it's not that great. It's not enough. You need sometimes a little bit more in order to get someone to actually follow you. Right. And so in this particular case, uh, she picked up about 2,000 followers. From the one act of jumping into the Hudson? Yeah, which means now that she's almost 11,000 followers. Good for her. Look at her. Oh, my gosh. Even if we want to build the Riot brand, I'm not doing that. So So let me see. I'm checking in. Is that? Let's see. No, no, no. She's doing it. She's up to 14,000 followers now. Gaining steam. Hey. (laughs) <laughs> Good for her. You kind of have to, at least on TikTok, you have to do something to get followers. Yeah. Something that stands out, that goes viral for a moment, and that's how people follow you. Well, you know what? She is, let's take a look at what she's done so far. She's done a $100 giveaway. Mm-hmm. Uh, she also has recorded video of her on a slip and slide. Is that like a slip and slide challenge, or are we just shooting video? We're just maybe shooting video. Well, I'll tell you this. If I told you that she was hanging out on a boat near the Statue of Liberty, if this is the house she lives in, that feels about right. Why is it nicer? It's very nice. Very nice. She has a very nice house. It's not like the water. Why doesn't she just buy TikTok followers? Uh, I don't know if you really do that. That used to be back in the day with like Instagram and Twitter, where a lot of people who have these enormous followers, but they stopped kind of. Yeah. You can still do that. You can still. Well, people notice it, though. It is obvious if someone buys a lot of their followers, where back in the day it wasn't as obvious. It was just like, wow, this is great. I'm going to go buy some followers. <laughs> Fine, you do that. I only want a couple of hundred. It's. No, no one that, will notice that. that. That's obvious? actually fine. I mean, if, if I jump to a million followers, everybody's going to know. But if you like, buy them at like 100,000 at a time, they're going to notice. But if you buy the smaller package, then no one will care. Well, my thing is, Nikki, like the Hudson River's far away. If I'm going to go swim in that to get the, like, that's a long trip. Actually, another trick to tell if someone bought a lot of followers, you'll see they have followers, but they don't get any interaction with their uh, their followers with their posts so they won't get as many likes or comments on it because the followers won't do that thanks to jim he he stopped by twitter he was already following me oh good he said i'm already following <laughs> you're such a great account well if you're on tiktok again just a reminder radio you official you should follow us there spend some time with hudson hey so what do you think of obadiah well, the truth is, he's not a very nice person. Okay, well, what about Nikki? The very best day is. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Listen, it's getting serious out there, okay? Like, it's all fun and games, but now all of a sudden you're telling me that the, it's like there isn't any part of our life that COVID-19 can't touch. Now they're saying that COVID-19 is causing a pepperoni shortage. Yeah, did you see that? What? the heck so we've seen other shortages since the springtime um the coin one is still going around like change um the aluminum can one what else has there been a shortage of toilet Uh, paper well yeah the toilet paper but i'm just saying even though it's old it still counts the clorox wipes the face man like all that stuff was was something that happened throughout the spring and into the summer but what did people do a lot during quarantine? Man, you eat the Besides pizza. drinking out of aluminum cans, what else were they doing? Uh, they were drinking. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they were getting pizza. They were eating pizza. So pizza gained a lot of traction during the stay-at-home time. 
and I think we're all still stuck on it. We were actually rolling our coins to pay for all our pizza. Pretty much. That's, so where, that's, that's where the coins changed. went. Yes. <laughs> Big Pizza has all the coins now. So a lot of people ordered pizzas. Pizza traditionally comes with pepperoni. Pepperoni has not had a chance to really recover from the quarantine time. And they say that if you find pepperoni, it is scarce. Uh, and if you have a chance to get it, it's more expensive than it probably would have normally been. Well, I want you to know that there's some truth to this because twice I've tried to buy pepperoni at a store Uh because, uh, you know, maybe I have occasion to make, I like to make my own, never, never copped to this before. And wait, wait, let's get closer. What is it? True confessions. I like to make my own pizza bagel. You do? That's a great idea. They're good. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. I just, you know. Hey. That's... Anytime you share from deep inside, you feel a little. Vulnerable. It, they call it a vulnerability hangover mm-hmm. where you share, but you feel like you've overshared. And then you're a, like, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Do you get a full pizza or a full bagel? Oh, yeah. You just take a full bagel. Full size? Yeah, like a straight up bagel. And I know a lot of people are like mini bagels. And you can do that, but you just. You get it. You get some. They make pizza sauce now in like a squeeze bottle. <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay. Squeeze on you the squeeze sauce. Squeeze it on there. Add some that and add some pepperoni. You toast, you toast the bagel. You do that. You do cheese. People put haven't it in really. The oven. They toast it's it up. So, oh, it's good. People haven't really noticed a shortage when it comes to like your pizza chains. I mean, right, they, they right. still they, have pepperoni there, but it's the at home person that's going to notice it. It's going to struggle. Yeah, you're going to notice the really lack hurting. of pepperoni. Uh, well, I'll tell you, I had, uh, well, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know what? We should get some pizza. I don't know about you guys, but, uh, like, I like pizza. It's good. Right? Yeah. No <laughs> one's arguing with you on that one. I mean, I like a good pizza right now. This article was saying, well, what would be the next topping then? If pizza went away, like, what would you do? Wait, okay, wait, 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 stop. So if are you asking me went if there away, was no pepperoni, what would I eat on my pizza? What would then become like the number one topping that people get on pizza? Because now it's pepperoni. Sausage? Sausage, okay. Yeah, hamburger. Hell, oh, that's good too. That's fine, but like the thing about pepperoni is that it's it adds a lot of great flavor. Just it's got perfect. the spiciness and the whatever and... Uh, don't talk to me about where it comes from or why it's spicy. You're like, it's spicy because it's got the souls of pigs. The Riot Podcast. Radio. You. Nikki, today is a big day for probably somebody somewhere. It's the Riot. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> What's the big day? You know, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator releases today. It, maybe you haven't been paying attention to this, but uh, it's coming to the PC, but they say it's going to come to the Xbox, and they are saying that it is a... Like a revelation yeah. in fidelity, an amazing way to see the world because you can fly just about anywhere and that they, they just say that it's this incredible thing. And I was looking at it. I'm like, man, I don't want to like you imagine how complicated it must be to learn how to play this game. Apparently, they have a like a mode where you can just play with an Xbox controller. Hmm. Like if you just want to. Go fly. Go be crazy. Have an Xbox controller fly around. You you can do that. Uh, or if you want to be like, I'm checking the flaps, you can do that too. <laughs> That's fun. So I I think I might give it a shot. Uh, it's free. Okay. Let's be clear. Is it's anything free, ever it's free? free with, with Game Pass. Ah, so you I pay see. for Game Pass, but you can download Flight Simulator if you want to. If you don't have Game Pass, though, how much does it cost you? Man, it depends. Or is it only like, for... There, man, there are so many different like versions of it and all this crazy stuff. I don't really know, uh, but I'm kind of interested in it. I mean, first off, I'd love to learn how to fly a plane, but where do you even start with this flight simulator thing? But then also, uh, the idea of being able to just have fun with it with a controller... That sounds good. It'd be good. It's like you're taking your vacation. You're flying. You're going. You're, you're able to fly again. You know what? You're you're back at it. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great. Finally, a plane I can board without a mask, and there's no line for the bathroom. And you don't have to feel scared. You're safe, and you're doing it all from the comfort of your own home. All from the comfort of your yeah, own home. Yeah, I wonder if a lot of people will enjoy Flight Simulator more because of some of that. Well, uh, maybe. So I I'd be up for giving it a shot. I've thought about going all the way, and like you can get. Man, people are crazy. Like, you can get foot pedals and... For the plain stuff? Yeah, like throttle. Like, you can get so much stuff. If you want 
to really experience what it's like. What it's like. You can you can go nuts at home if well, you want to. It's no difference between that and someone who does the racing game and has the wheels and the pedals and stuff. Well, yeah, I'm not saying it's bad. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that if you if you want to go far with it, you can go really far with it. Now, you it. could also save some money and maybe one day go the next level and take some flying lessons of your own. You could. <laughs> You could. I feel like those were always, what was that service with the coupons? Um, Groupon. Yeah, I feel like that was always like a Groupon thing. Your first lesson is free. (laughs) Yeah, for some sort of flying lesson and like a spa thing. Actually, that'd be a great birthday. Going to the spa, getting my flying lesson. Try my first flight lesson. You know, good stuff. Then they'll charge you for all the others, but your first one was free. (laughs) This was the worst of the riot, and we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. The riot exists because Radio U exists, and Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at RadioU.com slash donate. I should thoughtfully evaluate this. (laughs) 